So we're here at Ivan Ramen. You opened this place what year? 2007. I had come back to Tokyo in 2003 after a 10 or 15 year hiatus. It was the beginning of the ramen boom. I started eating ramen a lot, obviously, and I was really impressed with the double soup chio ramen. The double soup is, I call it the double dip. It's to take two completely separate soups and, and put them together. And so because I was so intrigued by the double soup shio ramen, I decided that that was the one I wanted to lead with. In my case, I do a whole chicken soup, no vegetables, nothing, just nice chickens, and I blend it with a katsuo kombu uh, niboshi dashi. Ivan is a special character, and Ivan in Japan has become sort of this uh, culinary Japanese ramen renegade. I decided to come up with a sofrito, and it's basically an onion, garlic, ginger, and apple. And I cooked it for about seven hours. It's interesting that you're, you're using sofrito, a staple of Tuscan cuisine, right. as your base for a Japanese soup. Right. Right now, he's captured the minds and imaginations of the dining public because what he's doing is flashy in the ramen world. Is it going to be amazingly epic? I don't know. You know, the hardest thing also is sort of measuring out all the stuff and coming out with the, with the right portions. Right. Ivan is adding something very non-kosher, which is a lot of pork fat, but he's adding something that is very Jewish in cuisine, and that is schmaltz, which is chicken fat. The uh, schmaltz here yields out of the, my, my chicken soup. I love that you just, you're just you cooking with schmaltz. Yes. I mean, nobody knows. All these people have no idea that I'm secretly sort of feeding them Jewish food. But. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I for me, it. I know. I love it. it. So we do, I have a little sprinkling of this stuff in here, uh, katsuo bushi, and I got it in a powdered form that I also blend with another kind of salt. This is a technique that was not available when I lived in Japan. Okay. I heat my meat just in water, you know really? what? And I'll tell you why. With all the other stuff going on, I think it really works to have the noodles in the soup really be the main attraction. Right. And then I have the noodles here, which we make upstairs. This is actually a 58% bread flour. Which and is a hard, hard wheat. If yes. Can. And then you're mixing it in with the local udon, udon flour, flour, which is traditionally very soft 7%. flour. And the whole idea of mixing the flours is to get the right texture right. with the noodle mixed with the kansue. Right. And I also wanted a noodle that cooked very quickly. 34 second noodle. Ivan's broth is unique in that it's majority chicken-based. His is sort of like a Japanese pork kosher chicken soup without the matzo ball. And then we have these hosaki memma. Those look amazing. Yeah, they, they taste like a bamboo shoot. And the egg, which I'll show you, which I really obsessed over. When I was a kid eating ramen in Tokyo, my favorite thing was putting that egg on your little renge and, you know, slurping some of the yolk. We're long lost brothers. Yeah. So that is uh, my Hanjuku Tamago Shio ramen. It almost tastes like I'm at the old Second Avenue deli, but if it opened up in Tokyo. <laughs> That egg's amazing. <laughs> These noodles are really perfect for the broth because every bite's perfectly seasoned. It literally picks up the flavors. For me, I only have one real ramen rule here. The noodles have to slurp, and the soup has to stick to the noodles. When you eat a bowl of ramen that's really unsatisfying, I think it's when the you get naked noodles in your mouth. No naked noodles here, just a kick-ass bowl of ramen.